Hello everybody. The NFL season is down to one final game. The Patriots and the Seahawks. Who's going to win? That's what we're here to talk about. My name again is Jim Coventry and I'm a senior writer at DraftSharks.com so fantasy football is my business. But sometimes having the fantasy football guy talking about the uh, Super Bowl is a great thing. I watch every snap of every game, preseason and regular season and obviously postseason as well. During the season, player matchups are my specialty. But now when we get to just one game, when we have all this time to look over one specific game, having these skills to analyze player matchups is a distinct advantage. So, let's take a look at this game first from the New England point of view when they have the ball. Let's start out go position by position. We'll start with the quarterback, Tom Brady. Brady, since week four, has thrown just about two or more touchdown passes in every game except for one. Um, he's been a dominant force. When he needs to throw the ball, he's able to do that, but the team is always willing to run the ball when they have to do that. What makes Brady's run impressive is that in weeks where they've been run heavy, he's still thrown two touchdowns in almost every game. His matchup against Seattle would appear to be very daunting. However, if we look at Seattle's schedule in the second half of the season, they really didn't face a team with a solid passing offense and a healthy quarterback. Even in the NFC Championship game, when they faced Aaron Rodgers, Rodgers wasn't himself. So we have to go back to early in the season. The Seahawks had a string of games where they faced Phillip Rivers, Peyton Manning, and Tony Romo. In each of those games, each of those quarterbacks threw for just about 250 plus yards and two or more touchdowns. It was a pretty significant sample size of three games. And even though it was early in the season, it was the only time when the Seahawks had faced quarterbacks who were healthy um, in a solid run. Now, if we consider how they played throughout the season, it's hard to look at those last weeks when they had Arizona a couple times, a struggling San Francisco team. So we have to take those games as being useful for our sample. The Dallas game especially. Dallas had a balanced offensive attack, which was one of the only teams they faced that had that. And Romo was the, was the situation, and he threw 250 yards and a pair of touchdowns. Brady has to be considered in that territory for this game. That seems to be very reasonable for him. To think he'll go off as a, as a, a foolish proposition. So as it looks, Brady has a significantly average matchup here. It's not as bad as many would think. The running back position. This is huge. Seattle has one weakness right now. It's at the defensive tackle position. They've lost... Um, I don't have to forget the name for a moment here. Jordan Hill, a defensive tackle, was put on IR recently. He was one of their primary contributors. Brandon Meebane, another um, dominant force inside, is also down for the season. If we go back to last season, this team ran with Red Bryant, who often played defensive end but was in on rundowns. He's gone in free agency. This is the spot where Seattle can be attacked. But to go in with the idea of being run first and attacking that would not be wise because the linebackers are exceptional for Seattle. So, to combine so far the running back and Brady, you have to imagine that New England will come in very balanced in this game. They will take their opportunities in the run game, but they'll also be able to find openings in the passing game, which brings us to the receivers. Throughout the season, Seattle has been a dominant group against receivers. But as I look back over the season game logs, I noticed that slot receivers had sustained success against this defense. So Julian Edelman is a good matchup here, especially when Rob Gronkowski is drawing some of the coverage away from the middle of the field and the threat of the running game has to keep the linebackers honest. So Edelman, who's been seeing 10 plus targets in most of his games and usually seven catches or more pretty much each of the last six games he's played, he could be seen to have similar results against this defense. He's not going to get isolated on a corner against um, the excellent cornerbacks. He's going to be running over the middle much more, so he should be fine. Brandon LaFell could be a sacrificial lamb in this game. He's had at least 60 yards in each of his last few games, but he doesn't match up well against the corners. So this will be a, a bad matchup for him. Where I expect the Patriots to take advantage um, is possibly getting Danny Amendola mix, uh, into the game mix a little bit more. His ability to run routes and also be effective in the middle of the field could be something that Bill Belichick and Josh McDaniels look to exploit. In addition, Rob Gronkowski. As you know, he's an unstoppable force. Now, Earl Thomas, the great safety of the Seahawks, is going to come into this game with a messed up shoulder. He's not going to be able to be his usual self. 
Gronkowski should be able to take advantage of dealing some punishment out to him. But I wouldn't be surprised if Josh McDaniels sends Gronkowski out on a Richard Sherman side of the field. With Sherman basically playing with one arm, he'll be severely limited with his elbow injury. I would expect that they would try at least to put Gronkowski out to that side. Now, New England likes to put Gronkowski out left, but I see them moving him to the right. He could literally beat up Sherman, and if he gets downfield on Sherman, Sherman with one arm is going to have a very difficult time beating Gronk at Gronk's game, which is physical. So I see that there are advantages to be had with the injuries against Seattle's defense. Uh, Seattle is a thin unit. They have a very good starting team, again, except for the defensive tackles, but they don't have much depth, and they have injuries to Thomas and Sherman is significant. Now, let's flip to the other side of the ball. Russell Wilson has been a winner, no question about it. But when you look back over the season, he normally doesn't have many games with over 240 yards passing. Um, they don't have to a lot. And he also, though, hasn't had many big rushing games lately. He'll put up rushing yards at opportune times, but he hasn't passed the 50-yard mark many times this season. So it isn't as if Wilson is going to just be running all day. I'm sure New England will learn from what the Packers did last week, especially in the first three and a half quarters of the game, by spying him, probably with Jamie Collins. New England will make Russell Wilson throw from the pocket. Uh, we'll move on to Marshawn Lynch in a minute, but, this, but the Patriots do one thing well. If your offense has one thing they do great, Bill Belichick will take away that element, which in this case would be Marshawn Lynch. In the meantime, they will look to keep Wilson in the pocket, which is where he spent a great deal of time against the Packers in the NFC Championship game. Now, New England has a significant advantage because Wilson has no offense to the receivers on Seattle, but they're average NFL receivers. Now we have Brandon Browner, who was a former Seahawk and knows these receivers well from his time there, and Darrell Revis. Most likely, Revis takes Doug Baldwin and should be able to blot him out of the game. Um, Browner shouldn't have a difficult time with Jermaine Curse either. So we just put the receivers together with the quarterback. Now, Seattle's best chance will be to try to use the read option. They had great success late in the game, but understand, Green Bay went into more of a prevent defense late and pretty much let that happen to them. Odds are Bill Belichick will have his defensive squad very prepared for this, and it would be difficult to think that Wilson can run all over them. Now that we covered Wilson, let's move back to Marshawn Lynch. As I said a moment ago, it's very likely that Belichick looks to take him out of the game. Um, they will commit players to stop him. And with their cornerbacks being able to have man coverage on the receivers, they have the resources necessary to corral Lynch. Now understand, New England has struggled against power backs this season, especially Chris Ivory, who played them twice and had about five yards per carry in each contest. The Patriots, however, don't give up many rushing touchdowns. They've only given up six all season, but only one of those came to a power back. Um, so it, with the game plan likely to be taking Lynch out, Lynch will still get his. He's been hot in the playoffs. Um, actually, over the last five or six weeks, he's had at least 4.2 yards per carry in every game. He's running hot. But the attention he'll receive should keep him from going absolutely off, so probably keeping him in the 100-yard range, which by no means is a backbreaker. The advantage, since we already talked about the receivers, is Luke Wilson at tight end. Now, the Seahawks only throw him four or five passes a game. But it's well documented that the Patriots struggle against tight ends, and Wilson is an athletic freak, capable of doing some excellent things on the field. Now, as to whether they'll make him the focal point of the game, hard to say, but they do have an advantage there. And if New England's going to get a passing touchdown, it would be very likely that he'd be the man to get it. As we look at this game, New England should have an advantage defensively. It should be very difficult for the Seahawks to sustain offense against their deep and talented defense. Now, you think back to the Baltimore Ravens playoff game, excellent game plan by Gary Kubiak. They used stretch, run concepts, rollouts from the quarterback, and it gave the Patriots a difficult time. Seattle does not have this in their repertoire, so it's not likely they'll be able to take advantages of some of the ways that you can beat the Patriots defense. Um, from a personnel standpoint, with the exception of Lynch, 
the sea um, I'm sorry the Patriots are a distinct advantage going back to the Patriots side and reviewing the Patriots will likely come into this game very balanced on offense and that will give them an advantage because the Seahawks won't be able to sit on any particular type of play at any time now teams have struggled to get touchdowns especially through the air well any touchdowns really against the Seahawks but I noticed as I looked back through the season that tight ends did very well against them. Antonio Gates scored three touchdowns, Michael Rivera scored two, and four or five other tight ends scored touchdowns. So that seems to be the good way to get to them. And if you think back to the NFC Championship game, the, the Packers had tight ends open in the end zone. They just couldn't make the plays. So it seems that will be their way to get the touchdowns will be using Grok in the red zone. Um, their receivers don't match up well to a point where they should score touchdowns. So, the final take of this game. It should be low scoring. The Patriots won't be able to move the ball at will. They'll move it sporadically, as will the Seahawks when they have the ball. With the defensive advantages that, this, that the Patriots have on the Seahawks, I see this game being lower scoring, but I see the Patriots coming out on top. I would imagine the score to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 19 to 13. There should be quite a few field goals. Um, it would be potential that the Patriots could get in an extra touchdown, but I wouldn't bank on that. I would see this being played closer to the vest, um, a lot of the clock moving on running plays and chain moving passes. So I think there won't be the type of game that will stop the clock a lot, it'll keep moving. So I do hold it at 19 to 13 prediction. Um, the Super Bowl should be a fantastic game, and as we know, all it takes is one crazy play and any prediction falls on its face. But based on the way the game stacks up, I'm confident the Patriots will bring home the Super Bowl trophy in Super Bowl 49. Thank you for listening, everybody, and have a wonderful day.